Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Change Christian Center. We are glad that you're here this morning. You could be anywhere else doing whatever you want to do, but you chose to be with us this morning, and we're grateful for that. We're thankful for you today. I just want to give a shout out to the Lord this morning. God has been good to us. God has done miraculous things in this week. He's kept us all week long. I just want to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for being the mighty God in Christ. Thank you, God, for just being our keeper, our health, our strength. You know, a lot of people are still dealing with this COVID variant. We're praying for you. Those that are sick and that are afflicted, we're praying for you. We're going to still give God thanks. In the midst of the pandemic, we said we're not going to panic in the pandemic. We're going to praise our way through the pandemic. God is still God. He still works miracles. He is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. We can call upon his name. And no matter what he said, if you call upon me, I will answer you. He said he would show us great in my things we did not know. God is still good and God is still doing great things in the midst of his people. And I'm thankful for that. I want to say thank you, Jesus, again. Thank you, God. Thank you for your blessings, seen and unseen. Thank you, God, for who you are to us. Thank you, Lord. If you don't have a praise this morning, join in and just say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Just give a thanks to God this morning. We're going to invite his presence to this service this morning. I believe Pastor Les has a word of encouragement and some words that's going to seep deep in the hearts of men that will be changed. We don't come here every Sunday with a word just to, just to be speaking um, to you all. We come with a word to stir up gifts in you, to stir the things that God exists to get you ready for ministry and ready for the work week. God has ministry for each and every one of us. Yes. Uh, we don't have to be behind a pulpit to be have ministry. We can have ministry doing whatever your gifts and your talents are. Use those gifts and talents. God only God gave them to you to use what he's called you to do to draw those in, draw the lost in, to be a light in this dark world, to be a witness to those that are around you. Whatever your gift and your calling is, God is expecting us to do exactly what he called us to do. There is a calling that God placed on your life. We encourage you every day to continue yeah. to seek his face. God, what is it that you want me to do? God, I'm thanking you in advance for the ministry that you called me to do. What is it that you would have me to do? Continue to seek the mind of God. Yeah. God is still good. God is great. And he has ministry for every single one of us. I just want to give God thanks. I feel his presence already in this place. We've been anticipating this service today. I know that God has a word for us. I know that he's doing great things. I want to say, if you have not been baptized in the name of Jesus, we invite you to inbox us. Do whatever you need to do. The Matthew 28, 19 says, Go ye therefore baptized in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. And that name is Jesus. There's only one way to be baptized, and that's in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Acts 2 and 38 says to repent and be baptized in the name. What is the name? The only name that we know that you can have your sins remitted is in the name of Jesus. If you have not been baptized in the name of Jesus, we invite you to leave us your name and never. You can contact us on our website. Whoever you need to get in touch with us, we will baptize you in that name to have your sins remitted. That when Jesus calls us home, that we'll be ready to meet him or we'll be yeah. ready to go home. Amen. Jesus, we want to make sure that we're giving you the information that you need to be ready when he comes. Yes. Lord, we love you and we thank you for this saying. We thank you for who you are, God. We thank you for your greatness, Lord God. We thank you for being the God of turnaround. We thank you for yes. being the God that lifts our head, Lord God. We thank you that you are the wave walker, whatever things that go on in storms in our life, Lord God, that you're able to walk on those storms and cause us to cease. We thank you, God. Yes. Unstop our ears this morning. Open up our hearts and give us thank wisdom and understanding of your word today, God. Let us lay off, oh God, the sins and things are easy, but set us and weighs us down today. And we open up our mind, Lord God, to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Let us not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not, Lord God. Give, a, give us a get-up spirit. Give us a spirit of right now, Lord God. Give us a spirit of urgency, Lord God, to do what you called us to do. We love you, God, and we thank you, and we appreciate you and who you are in our lives. In Jesus' name, we pray. As we bring Pastor Les to the platform, take your notes out, whatever you need to do to have this word hidden in your heart. If you listen later on, take some notes. We'll go back and revert to these notes that God would do a new thing in your life. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Thank you this morning. Like my beautiful wife said, thank you for being here this morning. Thank you for uh, being a Change Christian Center. 
We love uh, what the Lord is doing. We're excited about what he's doing. And we're excited about the fact that we can do ministry and do church with you all. And we appreciate it. This morning, I want to read it out of the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Uh, the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. The Bible says this. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' servant, saying, Moses, my servant, is now dead. My God. Now, therefore, rise. Go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give unto them, even unto the children of Israel. Verse 2 says, I'm going to go back and read it. Verse 2 says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise. And that's what I want to speak about this morning on this topic. Now, therefore, arise. Now, therefore, arise. Yes, yes. Moses, as you know, has been the leader of the children of Israel. He has battled Pharaoh. He has led the children of Israel out of Egypt. He spoke to God on their behalf. God performed miracles uh, through him for them. He received the Ten Commandments from the Lord. He interceded on the people's behalf before God. Moses was the one they looked up to. Moses was their leader. They trusted Moses. But there came a time when God decided that it was time for someone else to lead. He, he came a time where it was time for God to make a change. And he told Joshua, he said, Moses is now dead. The Bible says that after Moses died, the Lord came to Joshua and he said, it is time. Now, therefore, Joshua, arise. Now, therefore, arise. It implies urgency when you read it. It applies that now a situation is going on. That therefore, without delay, get up. Put the past behind, Joshua, and arise up. Because what has happened before, we're not concerned about. What we're concerned about is what we're doing from now forward. So he says, arise, get up. Arise mean what? It means to stand up. It means to stir up. It means to get up. It means to rouse up or to lift up again. So I want to talk to us this morning just for a little while about putting the past behind and moving forward in what God is doing today. Not what God did yesterday, not what God did last week, not what happened last week, but what God is doing today. God is forever changing, not who he is, but he is changing situations. He's in changing environments. God is forever changing and we have to be in tune with God. We have to be in tune with the spirit of God to know what the spirit is saying to the church and what the spirit is saying to us. He says, Moses is dead. And I want us to know that our past this morning, it is dead. This is now time for us to arise out of our slumber and our sleep. It is time for us to move mountains, church. It is time for us to dream dreams again. It is time for us to have visions again. We can't do this from a sitting down position. So we have to rise up in the kingdom of God. We have to stand firm on the word of God and on the things of God. And we have to move forward in the direction that God is leading us. We cannot do this from the sidelines. It is time to arise and get back into the battle. It's time to arise and get back into the fight. Your past no longer has a hold on you. I want you to understand what I just said. Your past, whatever's happened in the past, no longer has a hold on you. You are free from anything, any entanglements, anything that's trying to restrict you. You have to let it go and shake it off. By the blood of Jesus, I want you to know this morning that you have been set free. All you have to do is arise. 
Get out of the sitting position. Get out of the laying position and stand up on your feet and proclaim in the name of Jesus. This is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 says this. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, any man, therefore, if any man or any woman or any child, if any person in humanity, if anyone be in Christ, he, she, there is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. The old things that passed away is the past. The things that people try to throw up in your face. The things that people say about you behind your back. The words of discouragement that people try to hang around your neck. He said, behold, all those things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. And the only way that things is going to be new is if we arise out of our sitting position. If we arise out of our dormant position. And we stand up and proclaim the word of God. To we cannot understand. We cannot let our past uh, back. We can't let our past become our future. We cannot do that. We cannot let what people think and what people say about us dictate who or what we do in the Lord. Therefore, it is time to arise. The Lord told Joshua, he said, now therefore arise. And the word this morning to you is this. Now therefore arise. Get up, stand up, and proclaim the word of God. Moses was dead. And the people needed a leader. There was work ahead that still needed to be accomplished and people to be taken care of. And God commanded Joshua, he said, arise now, no more delays. When something goes dead, understand, when something goes dead or you lose someone dear, near or precious to you, you tend to get vexed, dejected, deflated. However, in the case of Joshua, God served him notice. He said, hurry up, Joshua. Take charge of the situation because you was raised for a time such as this. I want to tell someone this morning that's listening that you were experiencing heartaches and you experienced pain and you experienced loss and you experienced disappointment. But it is time to arise. You are born for this time. You are raised for this time. You are saved for this time. You are brought to the kingdom for a time such as this. Now therefore, arise up out of your slumber. Arise up out of your sleep. Arise up out of your dormant state. It's time to move in the power, in the anointing of the Holy Ghost of God. Amen. Now therefore, arise. It's a commandment. He said, now is the time to do it. It's an urgent situation. It's an urgent time. And we need to work urgently. We need to move steadfast in the things of God. We have to, we, we have to have an urgency about us. Surely the Lord is coming quickly. We cannot be dormant. We cannot be pacified about the things that's going on in the world. We cannot be satisfied because the Lord is coming back for a church who has made themselves ready. And I want to be ready. I want Change Christian Center to be ready. I want our neighbors and our friends and our families, even our frenemies, we want them to be ready when the Lord comes because surely he is coming quickly. Rise up, everyone. In 2 Samuel chapter 19, verse 7, the Bible says, Now therefore arise, go out and speak kindly to your servants. For I swear by the Lord, if you do not go out, surely not a man will pass the night with you. And this will be worse for you than all the evil that has come upon you from your youth until now. 
David's son Absalom was dead and he didn't want to go out and address the people but the servant said no you have to arise I understand that you lost your son I understand that you're, you're dejected I understand that you're feeling sorry I understand that your heart hurts right now but it's time to arise you have to go out and do what God called you to do you have to go out and face the people King David had work to do rather than sit around and mourn. There are times when we must pocket our personal emotion and start moving for God. Don't misquote me now. I know losing someone is hard. I've lost a father. I've lost a brother. I know losing someone is hard. But God wants us to mourn, yes, but not camp out there. He don't want us to stay there forever. He want us to arise in our situation. At some point, we have to stand up and shake ourselves and get back into the fight and get back into the race. And that's what I want to tell us to morning, this morning. This is the time. So let's look at that phrase. Now, therefore, arise. Now, therefore, arise. Now, it speaks about urgency. It's not then. It's not when you think about it. now is urgent. It means right now. There's a, there's a situation right now that needs your attention. Therefore, it speaks of work involved. It's something that has to be done. And arise is to get up. So when you put those phrases together, it says there's an urgent work that has to be done is need to, you need to get up and do it now. Therefore, arise. Who am I speaking to this morning? I understand you may be going through some things. I understand that your heart may be hurt and you may be disappointed in some people, in some things. You may be disappointed in where you're at in life, but I want to encourage you uh, that the Lord is want you to know that now is the time yeah. to arise. Now is the time to get up. Now is the time to rouse up. Now is the time to stand up because there is an urgency in the kingdom of God. There's an urgency in the speak in, in the things that's going on. It's an urgency to get the word in the message in the gospel of Jesus Christ out. He said, now therefore, put some urgency behind it. Now therefore, arise. Ezra chapter 10, verse 4 says, Arise, for this matter is your responsibility. But we will be with you. Be courageous and act. When the people of Israel had done atrocious things of mingling with the Gentiles crowd and pagan worshipers, the wrath of God had came down on them. God raised Ezra to arise and to teach the people the difference between clean and unclean things. Can I tell you this morning that we cannot ignore and we cannot neglect what is going on. We cannot ignore and we cannot neglect God's calling just because it is uncomfortable and just because it is too tough, just because it's going to be trying. God has prepared you for this season. Arise denotes getting up from your lying down position, getting up from your sitting down position. We can no longer afford to be lukewarm in the kingdom of God. This matter is the church's responsibility. It is my responsibility. It is your responsibility. The word of God, the gospel, the good news, it must be preached, taught, and carried to the four corners of the world. Arise. It's an urgent time. The urgency is that the kingdom of God must be preached and it must be taught because some people just don't know. Others know and they, they fell back or fell away. But the church, the people which are called by his name, yes. we have an obligation. We have an urgency about us to teach, preach, and live the word of God. Ezekiel chapter 22, verses 29 through 31. Ezekiel 22, verses 29 through 31. The people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery and have vexed the poor and the needy. 
Yea, they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully. And I sought for a man among them Come on. that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it. But I found none. Therefore have I poured out my indignation upon them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their own way have I recompensed upon their heads, said the Lord God. This sounds like where we are as a nation. This sounds like where we are as a people. We're living in a time where everything goes and there is no there is no barriers on nothing. You can say what you want. You can do what you want. You can act like you want to. Oppression and crime. There's no love for our fellow man. There's a vexing of the needy. There's a vexing of the poor. No one wants to help their neighbor. No one wants to help their brother. We can't even say hello to our brother. It's a put in it for me generation. This should not be the case of we we are people that we are came we we are made in the image of God. God is love. How can we love God whom we not seen and we can't love our neighbor who we see every day? I will say that again. How can we love God? How can we say that we have a relationship with God? How can we love God and we can't speak? To our neighbor. We can't say hello to our neighbor. We cannot be friends with anybody unless they fit in a certain parameter. That should not be the case. God is love. We should love our neighbor. We should love those that's in need. We should love those that don't look like us and don't act like us and don't talk like us. We should love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Matthew 22, verse 36 and 40 says, Master, they're talking to Jesus. They said, it says, Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments came all the laws and the prophets. We are living in a time, church, where there is a famine in the land. It is not a famine of food. It is not a famine of material. But it's a famine of the word of God. A famine of loving our neighbor. Many want to sugarcoat the word of God for the sake of numbers. Some want to sugarcoat the word of God for notoriety. Some want to sugarcoat the word of God so they will be liked and they will be loved and they will be talked about. But I want you to know this morning now, you can you can check it. You can take it to the bank. We are not that church. Change Christianism will stand in the gap for a lost and a dying world. When God is looking for somebody to stand in the gap and somebody to make up the hedge, change Christianism will stand and say we are that church. I want you to know this morning. That now it's time to arise. Like God told Joshua, Moses is dead. We're not with him no more. He is going. You are the man. You are the one right now. You are the one that's standing in the gap. You are the leader. You are the one that's making up the hedge. He said, Joshua, now therefore arise. And I want you to know this morning that whatever situation you may have been in, don't blame it on the past. Don't blame it on anyone else. Now therefore today, make a decision that you're going to rise. You're going to stand up. You're going to be the one that's standing in the gap. You're going to be the one that make up the hedge. You're going to be the one that preach and teach and live this word of God. You're going to be the one that God can look to and say, now therefore arise and you will stand up and say, here I am, God. Use me. I want you to know that arise, now therefore arise. Arise, like I said earlier, it means to get up, stand up, rouse, get out of your laying position, get out of your sitting position, do something for the kingdom of God. I want to know that you have to be a part of this. As I close today, 
Peter and John was going to the temple. The Bible says they was going and they got to the beautiful gate. And, and there was a lame man there. And he was asking for money. He was asking for alms. And, and I want you to listen to what Peter said. He said, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, I give unto you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. That lame man had to make a decision. He could have continued to lay there. He could have continued to sit there. But when Peter said, arise, he, he was telling him to get up out of your situation. Yes. Get up. Stand up. Raise up. And when the man made a motion to get up, when he made a motion to rise, then God gave him strength in his ankles and he was able to stand. I want you to know this morning that if you stand up, if you get up, if you try to move in the kingdom of God, he will endue you with power from on high. He will give you the power that you need to walk and talk. He will give you the power that you need to proclaim the word of God. Arise! Change Christian Center. Now, therefore, it's the time. It's an urgency in the kingdom of God. It's an urgency in the world. We will preach. We will teach the word of God. We will not add to it and we will not take away from it. We will preach what the word says. Yes, Lord. We're going to live the word of yes, God. Amen. So my word to you this morning. The word of God to you this morning is this. Now, therefore, arise. Put some urgency in it. We ask you this morning as we prepare to close. That you prayerfully consider standing with us. Change Christian Center. I'm praying. My wife is praying. You are praying for vision and direction. I believe that we can take this city. I believe that we can take this state. I believe that we can take this world for the kingdom of God. We can push back the enemy. We can beat back the enemy. We can proclaim the word of God, the miraculous works of God. We can have sins washed away. Jesus can wash them away in baptism. He will fill you with the Holy Ghost. God wants to do it in your life, but you have to arise now, therefore, and do what God has called you to do. We want you to pray to consider to join with us at Change Christian Center and let's take the kingdom of God and let's move it forward to and Jesus. be that example, be that light, be that intermediary, be that person that will stand in the gap between Christ and a lost and a dying world. Yes, amen. God bless you this morning. Thank you for being for Change Christian Center. Thank you for being with us on Sunday morning. Thank you for being a part of this ministry. We want you to be involved. We want you to take the world for Jesus Christ. God, we thank you. We thank you for your words. We're going to rise, therefore, this morning. We're going to be the one that you can look to and that you can depend on that will stand in the gap between the lost for you, God. Oh, we bless you this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. We give you all praise in Jesus' name. Now, therefore, arise. God bless you. We'll see you this week for our motivational minute. We have some more information that's coming up. We have midday manner that we're in the process of, of uh, deploying, and we're going to have more information on that coming up. It's going to be great. God's going to do mighty and wonderful things. And we just ask you, continue to be a part of this ministry. God bless you, and we'll see you this week.